Um, I want to start by relaying some of the desperate accounts that have come from my constituents. Uh, one of my constituents and his fiancée moved to St Albans in November 2020, 15 months ago. They needed dental care then. They tried eight NHS dental practices in the area. Not one of them could even add them to their waiting list. They have checked with those dental practices every single month for the last 15 months and still no joy. Um, his fiancé has now registered with some student dentists at a hospital in London. She's desperate to get some treatment. The good news is she's on the waiting list. The bad news is it is still a very long waiting list. Another constituent, uh, a mother, uh, her daughter is very young and this mother has spent two and a half years trying to get uh, her daughter an appointment with a dentist and she writes to me to say I'm surprised that there isn't even an obligation on NHS practices to, uh, to, to take in children especially when they have a dental issue. She herself has gum disease um, and, and it got worse during a pregnancy um, and she's had to spend all of her savings and money to try and go private. Another person who has been trying for ages to try and get a, an, an appointment with a dentist, uh, rang the NHS phone number, which says, which says you should call it if you can't get an appointment. All they did was search the website for her, which she had already done. Um, and their only advice, really, was that she should wait until she was in agony, and then she should call NHS 111. Now, what kind of advice is that? It is unfair, it is counterproductive, and it costs the taxpayer more. So the local uh, uh, dentistry uh, committee in Hertfordshire wrote to me. Um, they had written to NHS England along with the dental committees of uh, Bedfordshire and, and Milton Keynes. And they are begging for the payment system to be reformed. It is absurd that if a dentist carries out more work for their communities than the outdated cap allows, then they simply can't be paid. I mean, this is an absolutely absurd system. They are unable to provide care for the patients, to provide the care that their patients need. Now, this system of the uh, unit of dental activity skews the dental system, so it is now more attractive for practices to deal with less complex patients. And in many cases, they are paid the same flat rate for these treatments as they would be for helping those who have higher needs. Um, the Local Dentistry um, uh, Committee Confederation has also set out its plans to the government and to many of us as MPs to say that this system has to be reformed, it has to change. Um, and I sincerely hope that the Minister will give us a better answer today than the answer I was given to my written parliamentary question earlier today, which simply just confirmed that it was being reviewed along with lots of other options. Uh, we need to hear more positive noises from the Minister this afternoon. Now, in terms of what needs to change, the uh, Association of Dental Groups has made some recommendations on workforce as well, and some other members have alluded to their recommendations. They had their six to fix. They have talked about the need for more training places here in the UK, something which I'm sure we can all support. They have also called, something which I know some members have not referenced, for the recognition of EU uh, national dentists to have their recognition extended beyond the end of this year when it runs out. And thirdly, they have also called for uh, the UK to look at uh, recruiting from other countries that have a surplus of high-skilled uh, dentists. Unfortunately, it appears that it is news to some members uh, in this room that we have always been able to recruit from some of these countries, and it didn't require Brexit to be able to do that. <laughs> Nonetheless, I would like to put three questions to the Minister. When will my constituents be able to see a dentist? Question number one. Question number two. When will this absurd payment system be scrapped and reformed? And question three. When will there be a workforce strategy so that dental deserts, which we've heard so much about, become a thing of a past and this Dickensian system of years-long waiting is finally put to an end? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.